Hi everyone, and welcome to episode 7 of my Bluetooth Connection series. My name is James Langbridge, and today we'll be continuing our luggage application. So in the previous episode, we compiled and flashed our program, and we had a look to see what it could do. While it does look promising, it doesn't yet have the functionality needed to be usable, let alone sellable. Let's fix that by adding a few features to our program. First of all, let's sort out the alarm. Currently, we are turning on LED0 if a connection is made, and turning it off when a disconnect event occurs. We need to do something else to make this usable. For this episode, I'm going to be using the expansion board that comes with the WSTK. It has an accelerometer, a joystick, two push buttons, and two LEDs. We'll be using one of them. I want to use an LED on this board because I want to use the expansion header to easily add a buzzer to the breadboard. So, which LED are we going to use? Let's have a look at the documentation. So, we have a chapter called Expansion Board. Let's have a look at that. Button LED2, LED3, that's what we need. So let's use LED2, which is PF4. Write that down. And how do this work? Push buttons and LEDs. When configured as an output, 0 will turn the LED on and 1 will turn it off. Well, that's exactly like LED0, it's active low, so that should be nice and easy. So let's have a look at our code. Now, as you can see, I've done just a little bit of homework. I've added a, little, a few comments here and there. This is going to make it easier later on. So, first things first, alarm LED. Run the right line before using it. We need to call GPIO configure. So this line is for PF, PF6, except this is going to be PF4, which is the alarm LED. And that is on PF4. Okay, we've configured our GPIO as an output. Now, what are we going to do? If a disconnect event occurs, we're going to turn it on. This line here turns LEDs on. So let's copy and paste that. Turn on alarm LED on PF4. So that is for PF, and this would be for turning bit 6 on, except we're not using bit 6, we're using bit 4, so that's 0x40, 20, 0x10. Okay, if somebody disconnects, now we turn on the LED. Well, that was easy. Now, the next thing we need to work on is slightly more complicated, the power LED, LED0. So right now, before somebody connects, the LED0 is off. When somebody connects, it turns on, and it turns off again when a disconnect event occurs. We can't use that in a professional product. If nobody connects, the LED won't be turned on, and people might think the device is turned off when it isn't, using batteries. And when someone is connected, the LED is on all the time, shorting the battery life. Silicon Labs went to a lot of trouble to make this device highly energy efficient, but it's only as energy efficient as the developer is clever. So let's save battery life by making the LED blink. To do this, I'm going to need two things. I'm going to need variables, and I'm going to need timers. So how do you make an LED blink? We can't just use a do-while loop inside an event, otherwise we block all other events, and our product no longer works. So we need to use timers. A timer is an alarm clock, if you will. We'll set the time and let it run in the background. When the alarm goes off, it will create an event and we'll create a function to capture that event. So to know how to use a timer, let's look at the documentation. So I've received new documentation from Silicon Labs. This is the latest version. That's going to be under API reference. This is going to be a hardware command. Now where is that? Uh, Command set soft timer. That's it. This command can be used to start a software timer. Perfect. Let's take our PG script command. Let's put that. This has to be in the event system boot, so I'm going to put it here. Set the timer, paste that. I do not need the result. Now, let's look at the parameters time, handle, single shot. So, time. Interval between how often to send events in hardware clock ticks. One second is equal to 32768. Well, one second on, one second off sounds good to me, so let's copy that. And let's paste that in. Handle. What is handle? Timer handle to use is returned in timeout event, uh, time events. 
Now, we can have several handles. We can have, if I remember correctly, up to 255, depending on memory. So we're going to, we're only going to use one for the time being. So let's start off with zero. And single shot. What is this? Single shot. Timer mode value zero false. Timer is repeating. One true. Timer runs only once. Well, I want that to repeat. So let's copy zero. That's it. We've set up a timer. The only thing is, timers create events, and we don't have an event yet, so let's create one. Timer event. Again, this is going to be in the documentation, only this is not a hardware command, this is going to be a hardware event. Event hardware soft timer. Once again, let's copy BG script. Let's paste that. And let's end that with an end. So what are we going to do? If the LED is on, we're going to turn it off. If the LED is off, we're going to turn that on. The only thing is we don't know if the LED is on or not. So we need to add something first. We need to add a variable. So let's call this power LED. So this creates a variable. Now this isn't C, we can't assign values. Not here. So we need to put that in system boot. So let's add that to set up variables. Well, variables, power LED equals zero, our power LED is off. Now back down here, if power LED equals zero, then, and if, what are we going to do? So if power LED is zero, then we're going to turn it on. So we're going to turn on power LED here. Now I'm going to cut this because we're not going to use this in the connection opened. This is the hardware soft timer event that's going to turn the LED on and off. So cut and paste. Okay, and since it's only going to have two values, I'm going to do something else. I'm going to do else. And where is it? Turn off power LED. Cut that, paste that here. So what happens? If the power LED is zero, if it's off, then we turn it on. If it's not zero, that means it's going to be one, which means it's going to be on, and we're going to turn it off. One thing we need to remember to do is to tell the variable that we've changed. Power LED equals one. Likewise, power LED equals zero. Okay, well, we aren't done yet. Regardless of the user having connected or not, the LED blinks the same way. On for one second, off for one second. So we need to change that so that the user knows if he's connected or not. So let's change that so that when a user connects, the LED blinks differently. So I'm going to add something. I'm going to add them connected. I'm going to create a connected variable. Now what happens? Inside the low energy connection opened, I'm going to add connected equals one, somebody connected. When a client disconnects, I'm going to add connected equals zero. And same thing, set up the variables, connected equals zero. Nobody has connected yet. So what can we do? Let's add something. So if connected equals zero, it means nobody's connected. And if, now I'm going to cut this. Now I'm going to paste that here and indent that. So if nobody's connected, then we do this. And if somebody is connected, else, I'm going to copy this and we're going to do more or less the same thing. There we go. If power LED is zero, we're going to turn it on. And if power LED is on, we're going to turn it off. Except we're going to call the hardware sets off timer again. Why? Because our timer is set to repeat automatically. So every second or every 32, 7, 68 ticks, it's going to start again. The thing is, we can set it to set to turn on at a specific amount of ticks, which is what we're going to do. So sets of timer, we're going to call this. Paste that there. And paste that there. So if the power LED is off, then we're going to call this and let's put that. So this is 32768 for one second. Let's put 3276 for one tenth of a second. So it turns on 
We're going to reset the timer so that it will tick in a tenth of a second, and then it's going to call Hardware Soft Timer again. This time the power LED will be on, so we're going to turn it off and set the timer to go off in a second. Well, that sounds good. In theory, we'll test this out, but in theory, that means that if nobody's connected, the LED is going to be on for one second, off for one second. If somebody is connected, it's going to blink on for a fraction of a second and it'll stay off for another second. That makes it energy efficient. So what else can we do? There is one thing we could do. Now I said that we could call hardware sets off timer with a new timer event. We're going to do something else. If you set a specific number, then that's the number of ticks that it will take for the alarm to activate. But if connection is closed, we're going to turn off the LED completely. In order to deactivate totally a timer, you put in zero. We're going to copy this, turn off power LED. So if somebody disconnects, connected to zero, we're going to turn on the alarm LED. We're going to set the timer to zero, which means we're going to turn it off. And we're going to turn off the power LED. So, again, if nobody's connected, it's going to blink on a second, off a second. When somebody connects, on for a fraction of a second, off for a second. And if somebody disconnects then, then it's going to be off all the time. Well, looks like we finished our program. Let's clean this up just a little bit. Let's save this. And let's test it out. So let's test our application. Right now LED0 is blinking, one second on, one second off. That's because we haven't connected yet. So let's connect using the Silicon Labs application for Android. This will take a second. We are now connected, and have a look at LED0. It's still blinking. It's on for a fraction of a second, and then it stays off for another second. So far, so good. Let's do our final test. Let's disconnect. We're now disconnected. LED0 remains off all the time. That's good. And if you have a look at the expansion board, you can see that the LED2 is now on. We've just triggered an alarm. Well, it looks like we've hit the wrapping up point, so I'll stop here. In this episode, we've updated our application to something more useful and professional. I still want to change one or two things in the alarm, but we'll do that in the next episode. And then we'll take our project out for a test run. In the meantime, feel free to drop me a comment, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Don't forget to like the episode if you liked it, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.